What's happening guys? Keith here with your July 29th edition of the Impact Report. So if you haven't checked out my review already of this past week's episode of Impact, you can do so by clicking the link at the top of the screen. And speaking of this past week's episode of Impact, it drew 299,000 viewers and ranked 124 on Cable's Top 150. This is up 8.7% from last week's show that drew 275,000 viewers. I'm a little surprised that this wasn't a more viewed show as... There was a lot of positivity from Slammiversary with a lot of people saying they were going to check it out. However, here we are. Um, so moving on over to the YouTube page, the uh, top three viewed clips of this past week's episode of Impact. Number three was Austin Aries wants a match with Anthony Corelli's student. That had 82,000 views. Uh, number two, Scarlet Bordeaux's red hot debut, 93,000 views. And number one, Edwards answers Austin Aries' challenge with 94,000 views. So it seems like uh, Austin Aries is bringing in the views, at least for this week. So on this past week's episode of Keeping It 100, Conan had a couple things to say about Impact, the Impact Wrestling product and the management. Um, first, he was talking about the turnaround of Impact Wrestling. He said... What was amazing to me was that when the Hardy Boys left and Jeremy Borash left, I was like, wow, man, this place is going to be effed. You know what I'm saying? That's a big loss, but they just put it together. Then he spoke on the Impact Wrestling product. He said, the Impact Wrestling episode that was two weeks ago, I thought that show, I don't watch all Impacts because I don't have time, but I just happened to catch that one two weeks ago, and I thought it was phenomenal. I was talking to a couple wrestlers that watched the show, and they were all saying the same thing. Because all the great video packages, the verbiage, like you said, was very realistic. The in-ring was great. You got that payoff at Slammiversary. They continued the great angles. They had the great matches. It's really cool right now. Everybody kind of knows that there's a little buzz about us. But that's the main problem, that we've got the studio audience. But some people may overlook that and say, F the audience. We like the storylines and the action. Um, then he talks about Impact getting out of Orlando. And the other thing that we did a great job is that we got the F out of Orlando. So we're in Toronto, then we're going to New York, and the place we're going to in New York is the same place MLW went to in Queens, and you wouldn't believe the energy in that place. It was effing ridiculous. And we're going to go there now, Impact, and we've got a real big surprise with LAX that's going to go over effing huge in New York. Uh, there's rumors right now... I think it was mentioned actually on the podcast that LAX is challenging the Young Bucks on the cruise of Jericho, but no official word has come out about that. Um, he was talking about management treating wrestlers differently. He says, so it's a real cool time to be on. It's fun, bro. It's very fun right now because a lot of the people that are running these companies are not just old school grizzled vets. F you, you can't do this and you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? That stick in the room and all the old school shit we went through. Everybody now, they're mostly fanboys. So they respect the wrestlers instead of trying to screw them over in general. And everybody knows that now. You've got to treat people with respect and you got to treat them right. You can't treat them the way they used to treat us. And then he talks about Slammiversary. He says, that pay-per-view was incredible, bro. I think Phoenix might have been the guy that came away with the most buzz. I haven't read all of social media, but I think Phoenix showed everybody why he is one of the greatest wrestlers in the world right now. And that match was incredible to begin with. So that match was great. Ishimori was great. Morrison was great. And when Rich Swan wasn't supposed to be in it because he got hurt at MLW, I thought I wasn't sure if, if Petey was able to fill the hole. But Petey did a great job. The Tommy Dreamer match with Eddie Edwards was great. The storyline was great. The match was great. LAX was great. It was just a great show. Penta and Sammy, great match also. I think Impact showed it right now. It's got a lot of talent, and management's real cool. It's real easy to work with Sanjay, Scott, and Don. They let you collaborate, and it's real chill atmosphere backstage. Because if you're management, and you're a dick, and you don't respect the wrestlers like you've done throughout my whole career, and Disco's seen it himself, it trickles through the morale and through the whole character of the locker room. When the locker room is like it is right now, where it's very easy to talk to management and they let you collaborate, and everybody's joking around and having a good time. Like, the locker room's real reacts relaxed right now. 
and everybody's pulling together to really make this work. I thought that was a great pay-per-view. I saw every single match, and I thought it was really good. So great to hear those words from Conan. Um, Deadspin actually also posted an article um, titled, After Years of Disarray, Impact Wrestling is Finally Getting It Together. I'm just going to read you guys a little bit from the article, and then I'll leave the link down below. So they say, If you read about Impact Wrestling before in this space, you mostly haven't read anything flattering. The wrestling promotion, which l launched with weekly pay-per-view events in 2002 as TNA, and is still widely known by that acronym, Total Nonstop Action. If you were wondering, has long been some something of an industry laughingstock. Some terrible creative moves turned into WWE light, and tales of financial mismanagement and questionable worker treatment trickled out on a regular basis. The promotion was clearly not in good health, in short, and a dizzying parade of stories about the company's level of debt in fall of 2016 sealed the deal. Impact was real, but it felt something less than legit. This wasn't quite new. Either the promotion had long occupied a strange space in which, regardless of who worked there, it was near impossible to draw paying fans even if Impact talent could draw significant interest outside of the company. AJ Styles showed this to be true when he left in 2014 and swiftly became one of the biggest wrestling stars in the world. The story of his rise was, in part, the story of how stymed he was by his old promotion. That story has changed today, for the first time in a long time, and in defiance of recent trends, Impact Wrestling is surprisingly, but undeniably, enjoying something of a renaissance. So I will leave that link in the bottom, in the comments section, so you guys can check that out. Um, it was also announced that Moose had suffered a concussion in his match at Slammiversary against Austin Aries, so he will be unable to compete at today's AML confrontation show. Um, he was originally scheduled to face Jackson Stone. No word on him right now, so if there's any more news on that, I will let you guys know. But that show is scheduled to take place at 4 p.m. Eastern today on live on Impact Wrestling's Twitch page. Uh, so I'll run down the card, let you guys know what's going on. Uh, we have Zane Dawson with George South versus Falaba. Um, a six-way for the AML Prestige Championship match. This is a fan's choice match. Uh, fans will be able to vote on Twitch. The options are Ladder Match, Battle Royal, or Gauntlet. Uh, this will be Champion Billy Brash defending against Brandon Scott versus Devin Driscoll versus Sean Denny versus Suicide versus Gifted One Yaya. We also have Chris Payne versus Eddie Edwards. Uh, the AML Tag Team Championship match, the Extreme Horsemen vs. the Heavenly Bodies, uh, Axton Ray vs. Eli Drake, Kristen Statlander vs. Allie vs. Tessa Blanchard, and the AML Championship match with the champion Caleb Conley vs. Matt Seidel. Um, the last word on pro wrestling has a great preview on their website. I'm going to leave that in the link as well, get you guys familiar with some of the talent from AML that you may not be familiar with. And last, so on the last edition of the Impact Report, I asked you guys a question about what Impact needs to do to take that next step. It seemed like a lot of you uh, were talking about a new TV deal, a video game, maybe toys, and more partnerships. Um, the thing with the TV deal is I, I just think this current one doesn't really help Impact as much as you can just see by their broadcasts. It's Impact doing the work to promote pop rather than pop promoting Impact on probably any other part of the day. Uh, the video game, I don't know if that is feasible right now, just with the, uh, I don't know if there's any copyright deals with things because not everybody is contracted under Impact Wrestling. You guys might know better about that one. Uh, toys, probably the same thing, even though I would love to see that because, uh, Wrestling toys were a huge part of my childhood. That is some of the things that kept me interested in the product. And more partnerships. Well, it seems like uh, they're always moving for more partnerships. Um, possibly something going on with Ring of Honor, with the stuff that's been going on between, you know, Austin Aries and them and the crews of Jericho. Hopefully something leading with New Japan, with Taiji Ishimori coming back. So hopefully we'll see more there. But, uh... Yeah, that's pretty much all, all I have for you guys today. Um, I will probably see you guys back on Friday for my review of 
next week's episode of Impact. So thanks for checking out my video. And until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.